Yo, what is up YouTube? James back here and today is going to be the final of the exhibition sets for Series 5 uh, VGC 2020. Of course, we have the ladder coming out tomorrow, so I will be doing some ranked ladders. We're going to be back to back to back battles, which should be exciting. But of course, uh, you have all shown some amazing support for these best of three sets. If you want to see more in the future, be sure to let me know in the comments down below, as well as be sure to show me a uh, like down below if one it really helps out my channel especially if you enjoy the content be sure to leave a like down below it really does help leave a comment down below showing that you want to see more of these uh best of three sets in the future and hey maybe i'll bring them back but uh that's gonna be up to you so show me by leaving a like down below and leave a comment down below again it really just helps me in general and even if you don't want to see best of threes on the channel as much be sure to leave a like button anyway because it really just helps me out in general Today we have a very exciting guest and I am very happy to show him on the channel. We have someone who is hot off a top 8 at the Oceania International Championship earlier uh, this year in the 2020 format. And he is a two-time regional champion. He's one of my closest friends. We have Brady Smith, uh, whose social links will be in the description down below if you want to go check him out. But yeah, this should be really fun. Uh, me and Brady don't really play too, too much. So it should be really exciting to see because uh, we haven't really played a set really in so long. Um, so this should be a really fun exhibition match, especially to end things off. But yeah, if you want to check out my other stuff again, of course, as long as well as Brady stuff down below in the description. Be sure to check me out on Twitch. By the way, I do stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash jameswbeck. I have been streaming pretty much almost every single day, including VGC. And if you want to see some series vibe, VGC streams, twitch.tv slash jameswbeck is the place where you want to be. You can interact with me and an awesome community. And uh, you can also join the Discord if you want to check out some of the stuff that we do there, including some team building, some VGC question help, etc. Me and my community are awesome. Be sure to go check it out in the descriptions down below. You can check them out. But otherwise, let us roll the intro and get started with this video. All right, we are here. A best of three set versus one of my closest friends in the community. And uh, yeah, this should be pretty fun. Um, yeah, not really much to say. Let's just get straight into the match. Again, if you do enjoy these videos, be sure to leave a like down below and leave a comment down below. It really does help me out. And comment who you think is going to win this set. And uh, and then comment after that comment at the end when you finish the video. When you um, Do you think... Did the outcome uh, you expected occur? But uh, we got an interesting team here. Uh, we got, let's see, Male Indie D, Whimsicott, Mimikyu, uh, Cinder Ace, Dracovish, and Urshifu. So I don't know what Urshifu... I think it's the Dark Urshifu because Brady sent me like a uh, team very similar to this before actually. So this is going to be very interesting on how this plays out. Um... Yeah, this should be very interesting on how this plays out. I think I do. I can win. It's definitely possible. It's definitely weird because I feel like we both have good tools that can handle this. I really like having my Indy probably here. I like the Indy quite a bit here. I really do like being able to go for the expanding force. It also is like a reliable trick room setter here. I feel like in this game, I like Indy D here. Plus, I want to save Togekiss for the trick room option. I like having Gash on the back because it deals well with Dracovish and he doesn't exactly have the best answers on the Trick Room. And I really like my Incineroar because it's good against like size spam versions and yeah, just being able to intimidate. I gotta be really worried about the Urshifu though because if it is Dark Urshifu, the, um, the guaranteed crit with Wicked Blow can be very scary. So yeah, this should be an interesting game and yeah, uh, me and Brady haven't really played in an event since like 2017. We played a couple of uh, friendly sets. But uh, yeah, it's just exciting to play him again. We're going to see the Indie D plus Whimsicott lead here, which is an interesting combination as I do leave my uh, Togekiss and my Indie D straight off the bat. I don't think Moonblast plus Expanding Force should be able to knock me out. I should be able to get a Trick Room up, I feel like, here. And I feel like I just go Incineroar here because it gives me momentum. Yeah, I like having momentum right here because, like, I feel like Expanding Force is pretty free to click here. So I will go for the Trick Room here. And I think I'm just going to go hard in Incineroar. I really do like getting uh, pressure and not wasting a protect turn. And I really feel like it's definitely the optimal play here. So we will switch out here. If a Moonblast Expanding Force comes out, I don't think it knocks out, but we'll see. Um, oh, I guess he could go for Hyper Voice. I'm pretty sure it specs Indy with Hyper Voice. Oh, wait, this might not have been a good idea. Uh, let's see if Indy can take it because I'm not exactly sure. 
Uh, oh, we're gonna see Helping Hand come up. I do have a focus, focus Sash on this Pokemon, so it should be fine. Okay. So it goes for Helping Hand. It goes for Expanding Force, though. Probably, like, just trying to KO the Togekiss. Probably expecting, like, Follow Me. I didn't have a really good reason to follow me there because, like, uh, I know this probably had spread move. And that does a lot of damage to my NDD, but that's completely okay here. As we do get the Trick Room up, and now I kind of, like, have a good pin here. Yeah, I have a really good pin. He doesn't really have a good Dark Resist besides the Urshifu. And Urshifu, well, I guess I could switch into Expanding Force, but, um, yeah, I think I'm just going to go for that attack. And you know what? I'm going to go for the... I kind of want to Flare Blitz, because I feel like you don't let NDD go down here. But is that worth it? Because it, if it's Dark-type Urshifu... I do have Togekiss, I guess, and it wouldn't be that bad of a situation. Yeah, I'm actually just going to Expanding Force uh, the Whimsicott. And you know what? I'm actually going to Flare Blitz the Whimsicott too, because I think KO and the Whimsicott is pretty nice, just giving me a Pokemon count. We're actually not going to see a single switch from Brady. Okay. So I'm able to get a Flare Blitz off into the uh, Whimsicott slot. Which is pretty nice because I'll be able to uh, bring it down to Focus Ash and uh, KO with the Expanding Force, assuming he wasn't min speed, which I really doubt he was on this team. I'm pretty sure the damage pretty much confirmed specs. And uh, yeah, we are going to be able to knock out the Whims Cut, which is pretty really good here. So we are able to eliminate that. We're going to see the Expanding Force come out once again, which should be able to knock out my NDD as this range, but I get a free switch, which isn't terrible for me. And I could get a free switch into either Togekiss or I can go out into my Gastrodon. I'm trying to think. Uh, a lot of his team is really weak to the uh, Togekiss, so it might be in my best interest to go Togekiss, but I feel like Gastrodon has better max moves in this situation. Well, let's see. Do I think Urshifu is coming out? That's a big question. If it's Urshifu, I do want to go Togekiss. If it's uh, Mimikyu, for instance, I might want to go Gastrodon here, but you know what? I'm going to go Togekiss anyway. I think Togekiss is fine here. Uh, to pressure the... Uh, I really do want to pressure Urshifu in case back and Cinderace is actually gonna come out oh, I could have went Gastrodon oh man I could have went Gastrodon that sucks for me okay but that's fine I think I'm just gonna go for a Ooh, that's annoying I didn't think Cinderace would come out because I thought he would be scared of Gastrodon coming out but okay Cinderace is the one being revealed here um I'm actually going to go for Dazzling Gleam right off the bat, and I think you turn out the uh, NDD into my Gastron because I think it's worth it here. We're actually going to see the NDD switch out, which is uh, fair. And we're going to see the Mimikyu come out, so that's cool. I get to break the Disguise and get a lot of damage off, and I really do like that position, actually, for me, uh, because I'll be able to get a decent amount into the Mimikyu this turn. We're going to see the Cinderace Dynamax, and since this is a hyper offensive team, I'm assuming the Cinderace has four attacks. Um, I'm actually not sure if it had four attacks for protecting the original pace that uh, Brady sent. Because uh, he shared his team on Twitter, actually. So, we do see the Cinderace go for that Dynamax here. And I do think that the U-turn plus the, uh, the Dazzling Gleam was the best play here. I don't know who I'm Dynamaxing, though, in the end game Because I could realistically Dynamax either Togekiss or my Gastrodon. But let's see. I mean, a Max Flare shouldn't knock out the Togekiss, I think. Uh, because I have a lot of defense. If it has Steel Spike, it might. But, we'll see. I'm gonna go with my Gastrodon here. For sure. And let's see how much the Dazzling Gleam does to the Mimikyu. As Dazzling Gleam, that's a really solid amount. I think that's a crit. Yeah, it's a crit. Okay, perfect. Extra chip. Double Crown Cinderace, but I don't think the Cinderace matters too much. It is Steel Spike, though. Okay. So, that's perfect, actually. Because now I'm gonna be able to get a position where I can just go for Max Quake the following turn. And knock out the, uh... The, uh, what's it called? The Cinder Ace, and then I'm going to be able to click Flare Blitz, or even Drill Chop might knock out the uh, Mimikyu at this range, but I think I click Flare Blitz always because I don't want to risk the uh, Mimikyu surviving that combination. So, yeah, I definitely think it's worth it. I also get Intimidate off into the Cinder Ace, which is absolutely useful because in case Cinder Ace somehow survives the Life Orb Max Quake, I'm about to dish out onto the Cinder Ace. You know, I just gotta. I just got it. So we'll go for the Flare Blitz into the Mimikyu slot. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to Flare Blitz the Mimikyu. And I'm going to go for the uh, Max Quake here. Because there is no switch in for Brady's side. Uh, Max Guard could come out from the Cinderace. But I don't think that's that bad of a situation for us. Um, Mimikyu's don't really carry Protect. I always forget about if Mimikyu does get access to Ally Switch. Which I am not exactly 100% sure if it does. But if it does, I really hope Brady doesn't have Ally Switch. <laughs> but I don't think it does. I'm pretty sure we would have seen it already. So, oh, in general, in the past. So, 
bring out the dynamax gastron the team relies on self surf spam with the galarian slowbro and bring it with the gastron and start surf spamming uh for the potential so yeah that's basically the what the idea is of this team we will get the max quake off into the uh cinderace which does pick up a knockout into the cinderace which is cool all right so cinderace does go down okay not bad not bad so i am able to knock out the cinderace which is cool and okay so that should i think secure a win uh i think it's really hard for him to break through my uh gastrodon especially a plus one and my incineroar because flare Blitz should be able to knock out the uh, mimikyu here yeah awesome we're able to knock out the mimikyu so mimikyu does go down excellent and yeah this is pretty good of a situation um we're gonna see that the um what's it called ndd male i have the same ndd is going to okay so we are able to eliminate this ndd with drill chop it can't knock out both my pokemon and especially with the max quake damage so it looks like we're going to be able to take game one as brady does forfeit realizing there's not really much to break through it wasn't a bad gameplay i actually didn't think he would uh lead the whimsicott like whimsicott was not the lead i was expecting at all actually so uh this could be interesting yeah okay i just don't know what he's gonna do to adjust i felt like he was gonna lead mimikyu i actually really was expecting a mimikyu lead but i mean it's not terrible for us we're in okay position game wise and all right we're going to game two you might notice i have a different shirt on and that's because we had some scheduling issues with the game two so uh we're doing it a different day but all should be good uh we got let's see the ndd male whimsicott mimikyu the cinder ace draco Vish, and urshifu once again <clears throat> sorry about that my i just finished dinner and uh feeling pretty full right now but i still am going to try and win uh we'll see here let's see i really like leading my so the last lead worked out amazing for me since he led the ndd mail and i was just able to get trick him up i know he's spec so he doesn't have him prison so i do think mimikyu is like a really big factor here i wouldn't be surprised if he led mimikyu plus cinderace i think mimikyu plus cinderace is amazing because you would probably be able to kill my Togekiss with Steel Spike. And then you would be able to taunt my NDD. Since I'm pretty sure the Mimikyu has taunt. I'd be very surprised if it didn't. So I, I think it's better just to lead this anyway. Because I could always bait the Steel Spike and go instant and make him waste some turns. I could even double and go out on a Gastron. So yeah, I kind of like that play overall. Um, Actually... Do I like NDD? I kind of want to go slow burn. You know what? I want to bring slow bro so you know what we're gonna do the same thing but we're not gonna bring the AD ndd this time we're gonna bring the ensign and the gastrodon here and we'll see how it works uh i think it's okay here i just have to be very very careful with ensign but i think we should be good because i gotta be careful about the urshifu which is the problem pokemon that i'm gonna have to deal with i want ensign to deal with the mimikyu uh maybe uh the ndd could have done better as well but i'm not exactly too sure i think both work here we're going to see the Whims got Cinder Ace lead again, as I am going to lead my Togekiss plus my uh, Slowbro. And I know that this Whimsicott doesn't have um, Trick Room and can't really stop me from getting up Trick Room if he goes for an attack here. So I think I am just going to get the Trick Room up. And if Togekiss goes down, I just get a free switch into uh, my Gastrodon and I get to start doing damage. So I think that's 100% to play. Unless I want to go for the attacks here, but... I'd rather get the Trick Room up because speed control is very important in this. So yeah, I'm just going to go for the Trick Room right here. We're going to see the Cinderace Retreat here, which is going to be the Mimikyu. Okay, so probably has Trick Room on it and wants to reverse the Trick Room. Uh, we will follow me here as maybe he taunts so uh, he can uh, prevent Follow Me's from coming up. But it's going to be the Dazzling Gleam instead. Just trying to get some chip damage, which is completely respectable. Uh, does an okay amount to my Pokemon, but I'm able to take it pretty well as Trick Room does go up. And... I kind of want to get rid of this Mimikyu because I want to get a lot of damage. He might reverse Trick Room, which is completely fine because I have the pressure. Um, at least the offensive pressure because Whimsicott and Mimikyu aren't really doing that much damage here. He might switch out to reposition, but I think overall I'm just going to be able to get like damage in the Mimikyu. And I think that's going to be really clue. I could go for the Air Slash for the flinch on the Mimikyu, which could deny Trick Room. But I don't want to miss. I want to get the guaranteed damage off into the Mimikyu. Because if I get the guaranteed damage off in the Mimikyu, it's really good for me. So we'll go for Sideshell Arm into the Mimikyu slot and break that disguise. If we get a Poison, that would be really nice here. Um, we'll see. 
It could be Lumberry, though. Let's see, doesn't get the poison. It looks like Dazzling Gleam going to come out, do an okay amount of damage to both. If we get a crit, it'd be nice. Uh, I don't think that's a crit. Nope, that's no crit. And we do see the Trick Room go up, which is completely fine. So, this next turn is going to be really interesting. Uh, the Cinderace comes out, which is completely okay for me. I think Steel Spike is going to come out. I actually don't remember if he carries Steel Spike. I feel like he did, but I can't exactly remember. Um, I honestly just want to go for the KO into Mimikyu, actually. And I think I want to go out in the instant. The reason I want to go for this play is if the Mimikyu has Taunt... Uh, there could be like a steel spike situation at Togekiss. This is why I thought he would lead this because like I thought he would just steel spike in the kiss and taunt immediately. So I think Incense is a really good play and uh, just going for the side shell arm into the uh, into this uh, Mimikyu slot is really good as well. I think for the pressure, I get an intimidate off into the Cinderace, which is absolutely huge. If it wants to Dynamax, that's fine. If it doesn't Dynamax, I think that's okay as well because like Iron Head won't do too much. But we are gonna see. It looks like it is gonna be the Dynamax. I don't remember if he carried Max Darkness on the Cinderace. If he did, that's going to hurt my Slowbro immensely. But uh, we'll see how this goes. I really hope it's not Max Darkness here. I feel like it shouldn't be. Because I feel like uh, it's just such a safe play to just go for the Steel Spike. So Cinderace is going to go for the Gigantamax form right here. As we are going to see the Max Knuckle. Oh, he read it. Good play, Brady. Good play. I can't blame you for that one. Max Knuckle going to come out into probably the Incineroar slot. Yep. Really good play by Brady. Not surprised. Let's see. I was worried if he called that, but I really thought he would make the safe play here. Uh, does take the chip, and we're going to see... Yep, a taunt. No surprise there. Into my slow, bro. Okay. So we will go for the side shell arm into the Mimikyu. Doesn't pick up a knockout, which is unfortunate because I think he just gets a... I wonder if he goes aggressive again and predicts the Togekiss coming out here, which I could definitely see him making that play. Um, I got to figure out a position. I got to figure out a way to reposition. I feel like he might steal Spike the Incineroar because it might actually just knock out at this range and he might try to predict my kiss here. Hmm. He couldn't knuckle again, but I really don't see a reason he should knuckle. I think I just get rid of the Mimikyu, but that does invite in the Urshifu, I guess. Uh, this is kind of a very problematic slot. I think I go for the knockout Mimikyu to prevent the taunt option. I'm going to U-turn out, actually, the Mimikyu as well. Uh, actually, no, I should have expanded Force if that's the case, but we're going to see Mimikyu retreat, actually, into Whimsicott. No, Urshifu. Okay. Uh, for that pressure, it looks like we're going to see Airstream come out. Okay, so maybe turning down the uh, Incineroar just to cover for the switch here. Yeah, it does cover for the switch. Okay. That makes sense. I think that's okay, though. I don't think I'm in a terrible, terrible spot. It is very concerning, though. Because Max Knuckle, and if it's Choice Bandit on this thing, is going to do a lot. As we will go for the uh, Sideshell Arm, and we'll get some chip. Uh, if it's Focus Sash, I do get to break it, but it, uh, Whimsicott probably is a Focus Sash, so very unlikely. Ah, uh, Togekiss is a play. I could Dynamax the Togekiss. But I could also Dynamax the Gastrodon. Which isn't a bad play. I don't think they're either bad plays. I'm just trying to figure out what's more likely for me to win. So if I go Kiss here, I could go for Steel... He could go for Steel Spike, and that would do a lot. But I could Max Guard. But then he probably gets a knockout on Slowbro, which would be concerning. You know what? I think I'm going to go Gastrodon here. Yeah, I think I'm going to go Gastrodon here. And... I really want to go for the Max Guard here. Max Guard would be great here. Um... I just don't know if you're going to lash out my Slowbro or not. How many turns of Taunt do I have left? One. So, I feel like you might max Knuckle Close Combat knock out the Gastrodon. I'm really concerned about Lash Out, though, here. But you know what? I could Dynamax Slowbro, too. That could be a crazy play, but I don't think that's exactly going to work out for me. So, you know what? I'm going to go for the Surf. Yeah, Surf is fine. I get some Chip. I'm going to go for the Max Guard, actually. I really hope he doubles into the Gastrodon slot. Maybe not expecting the Max Guard play. Because Gastrodon is not a Pokemon that usually likes to... Um, who doesn't really Max Guard too much. But we'll see here. He might think he could get like a Knuckle KO into the uh, Gastrodon. And then that would put me in such a huge position. Uh, but he might capitalize and just double in the Slowbro. That would be a super solid play as well. So let's see. Max Guard going to come out. Does he Knuckle? Or does he... He does knuckle into the Gastrodon. Okay. 
Oh wait, no, he knuckled. No, he did knuckle Gastron. Okay, okay, okay. I got an expanding force, but that's okay. Wicked Blow gonna come out, okay. Which does knock on my slow, bro, because that thing gets a guaranteed critical hit always on any attack, so that's fine. Um, Yeah, we're gonna go out into our Togekiss here. He's only at neutral with Cinder Ace, and I can knock it out here with the, uh, air, uh, the uh, Geyser should be able to knock out. I could Quake here, but does he max bounce is the question? I think that's the question I have. Um, I could double the, I could target the Urshifu. It has to be Choice Band in order to do damage. Because I don't think a Focus Ash variant would have KO'd. Yeah, I think it has to be Choice Banded. But the question is, what do I do here? Because I think bounce is very likely of a situation here. Did I reveal Protect in the last game? I just don't remember. Oh, he's only at neutral. Let me see, was he, is he plus one with Urshifu? No, he's not, okay. And the Urshifu is at minus one speed. No, plus one speed. Okay. I'm going to go for the Geyser in the Cinderace and Protect. I got to call whether a bounce is coming out or not. It could be a bounce. That would be a very solid play. I think it'd be okay. Let's see. No, it does go for the Iron Head. So I do get that read correctly. <sighs> Although I could have quaked here for maximum output, but that's fine. Close combat. Wait, he's not banded. I thought he was. So he's Dissolve Vest? Maybe he's Dissolve Vest. Okay. Urshifu... That did a lot, though. That close combat did a lot. But then again, I am pretty uh, defensive. I mean, not defensive, Gashadon. Uh, we are able to knock out the Cinderace. Okay, it's a game. It's a game. Cinderace goes down. I think it comes down to what this version really has. Okay. This is really, really close. Really close. He's gonna go out into the Whimsicott. Okay, I hope he doesn't have Energy Ball. I definitely could see Energy Ball on this team. But we saw, okay, I know he has to have Taunt. He has Gleam, he has Tailwind. I could definitely see Energy Ball, but I could also see like Helping Hand. Hmm. I'm gonna go for the Dazzling Gleam though. I think it is my best play here. And I think I just Quake. Yeah, I'm gonna Quake the Urshi. I double up in Urshifu. Here comes Iron Head. I don't think this knocks out. No. Okay. I think I'll live Gleam. And then it comes out to an Iron Head flinch. Dazzling Gleam comes out. That was a crit on Togekiss. But we live. And we get the Dazzling Gleam up. That is absolutely huge. We're able to knock out the Urshifu. And we'll be able to knock out the Whimsicott. Uh, crit on Whimsicott. It's hard to say if that mattered. I really am not sure. But I think I would have still been able to win anyway. Yeah, that could have been tough. I don't know. Like, it was a tough spot regardless, so I just don't know. But I did get the one out of three crits, so it's not, like, terrible. Because I am able to go for the Quake here. Knock out the Whimsicott. And then it comes down to the, uh, what's it called? The Mimikyu at, like, really low HP. Yeah. Oh, that was so close. That was actually super close. <laughs> I honestly thought I might have been in trouble. I did have to get the max guard read right, I think. Although maybe I could have just went on the offense. Uh, but I don't know if Gastron would have actually KO'd. Because even though it's a life of Gastron with max special attack, it's still like a Dynamax Pokemon. It's still pretty healthy range. So we're going to go for the Earthquake here. I don't think uh, we're going to see any spread move. We're going to see Play Rough in the Gastron. Uh, it does actually pick up a knockout, actually. Wow, that did a lot. That's max attack? Is that adamant? That's what I'm going to come out. Finish off the Mimikyu, and that is going to be a good game. Another crit, but that one definitely didn't matter at that point. <sighs> that could have been... I wonder if... Hmm. I wonder if actually the crit mattered on the Whimsicott, because maybe he lived Quake? I don't know. It would have came down to uh, if he lived Quake. It is life for Quake, but I'm not 100% sure. And that is going to be a good game to Brady. We are going to get a post-interview. One of my best friends in the community. He definitely gave me a run. Uh, for the money but let us see what he has to say in the post game interview all right we're here with the post game interview one of my best friends in the community an awesome guy that i love to hang out with introduce yourself man how are you doing hey i'm i'm, I'm pretty good i'm brady b smithy underscore on twitter go ahead and drop that follow show me what's good of course i'll be linking all the brady stuff including his twitch channel he is he does stream pokemon he's taking a little bit of a break right now but absolutely funny streamer definitely one of the more entertaining vgc streamers in my actual opinion 
and super underrated as well so make sure you go drop him a follow on his twitch channel as well as his twitter as well he makes some funny uh pokemon memes but yeah um that was the set that was the set yeah i was hoping it'd go to game three but uh it, it didn't i was um, hoping for game three too <laughs> <laughs> all right so i guess let, let's let's yeah, let's talk about it a little bit um so game one i kind of got smashed just because like i did not respect the ndd option from trick room uh so I'll go ahead and explain this. Basically, I led uh, my Ndidi, um, expecting your Slowbro to get lead. Because Helping Hand, Expanding Force, just knocks out Slowbro if, if you try going for Trick Room. Like, it's that powerful. So I was like, game one, that's what I was expecting. I just saw the Ndidi and I was like, oh no, no, no. <laughs> I just did not expect that. I, and then like, oh, whenever that happened, like you just got Trick Room, just kind of like went through my team. I, I, I couldn't like match your offensive pressure inside Trick Room. Yeah, literally all I needed was Trick Room. You couldn't really reverse it at that point because I was able to basically just spread powerful attacks and yeah, pretty much just like went downhill super fast for you. Yeah, exactly. I do want to talk about uh, one play um, where you had Slowbro and Sinner on the field. And, or sorry, Ndidi and Sinner on the field. That's right. Uh, you went for the Flare Blitz and knocked out my Whimsicott. Um, and I, I got off an Expanding Force on my Ndidi. Um, my logic behind that was I was really expecting the U-turn, um, cause like, I thought the protect plus like switch out was like fairly obvious. Um, so like I, I was trying to pretty much like, cover like, I, I, I don't know, I feel like I was in such a bad position where I had to make like, I had to hope that you would misplay. Oh, absolutely, um, I felt, yeah. Like, yeah, like U-turning uh, would have been like a bit of an overextension from you. And then like, uh, if, if I like lived and got off an expanding force on something in your back, uh, and then got off a dazzling gleam, that just like, uh, killed pretty much anything, so um I, I i was just trying to like hope that you would have misplayed uh but you you, <laughs> you played that right <laughs> you just like knocked out my whimsicott i was like all right well yeah there, there's any chance of coming back in this game yeah and that was game one and uh yeah it definitely looked like game one for me it per absolutely like you probably just like was trying to figure out how to like you know stall out or like reverse this trick room but basically like since your team is pretty frail for the most part as a hyper offensive team uh, just getting yeah. that chicken was just detrimental. Uh, did you have yeah. Hyper Voice though on the Indie? I was just wondering if you had Hyper Voice. I did. I do have Hyper Voice, but the problem is, like, I know you were Sash, and like, if I went for Helping and Hyper Voice, um, so, uh, that also lost if you maxed your uh, your Toad Kiss, and I just want to get off damage on your Toad Kiss. So like that, like I was telling you a little bit uh, personally, um, but I'll go ahead and say it right now, like I was really uh, overly respecting Dynamax and Toad Kiss as an option. Um, so I thought that Helping and Expanding, uh, Expanding Force would like. It'd do like 60 to 70% of the Togekiss if you chose to max it uh, for like whatever reason. Um, and I thought that it covered that option. Uh, but then just like switching to NC, like, y you know, like that, that just uh, nullified the expanding force. Yeah, and then um, pretty much. I mean, I'm not sure if Hyper Voice Gleam would have KO'd. I mean, I think it might have because NDD Mail is pretty frail. I mean, I am max HP, but like it would have yeah, been like close. I'm not exactly too sure on the calcs. <laughs> Indeed, he is so bad. You give it way too much respect. If I had Moonblast, that would have gotten it. If I had Moonblast, yes. But Dazzling Gleam would have only done like 20% max to Indeed. Like, yeah. The, thing is, the Dazzling Indeed. Gleam was so weak on my yeah. Togekiss and uh, my Slowbro. Are you even a special attack investment? I actually wasn't even sure. Yes, I'm max. <laughs> that was max? I honestly thought you were like, <laughs> is that bad. max HP? <laughs> it's so bad. Um, the, okay, so the thing is, like, in DD Mail, it's not bulky, but especially it's not the most unbulky, if that makes sense. It's it's base 95, so, like, Hyper Voice, because you're also max HP, so, like, Hyper, I had a Hyper Voice plus Dazzle, um, and that would not have gotten that. Like, it's, your max HP off of 95, like, I, I don't think that, like, it would probably have done, like, 70, 80%, and then we got it on Trick Room. Um, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so, like, that's up in game one. Game two, I felt like I approached it much better, but I choked in the end game. So, I remember, what, uh, got a trick room early, because I hard, like, I, I tried adjusting for the slow bro game. I did not, if I went my game one plan, I just would have helped me hand. I, 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 uh, <laughs> I knew you were a lady that. It just if didn't did work that, out for you. I know. If I did that, <laughs> then, like, if you switch to NC, I don't care. That was gone. If you, like, if you Dynamax Tokus, that did 70% to it. And I just get Tailwind. 
and like I was like, okay, yeah, this this is VGC. Like this would have like been the option. But they're like whenever you adjusted with the the slow bro, I was like, ah oh, shoot, I really I don't know what to do now. Um so I, I had to make like so many reads. Uh I had to like call like the first like what like three turns like exactly as they went down uh, to get myself in like a position where I, I could get a 50-50 to start getting the game. Um Okay, so I remember what, uh, you got it for Trick Room turn one, and I switched out my Cinderace. Uh, that's because if I just kill your Toad Kiss and you'd gotten Gastron, you just won the game. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I literally just think Surf and Attack so that you yeah. can do anything. So, I didn't want that to happen. I don't know about you, but I didn't want that to happen. So, like, you know, I, I figured that Dazzle plus, like, switching in Mimikyu to put on pressure, um, was probably, like, the, the best way to, I guess, force you to either, like, try to reverse your own Trick Room, uh, or like, or, or me like get your trick room reverse. Like that was like the only way I could win is if I like got your trick room uh, off the field. So it was either like getting you to outplay yourself or like just kind of <laughs> reversing the trick room manually. Uh, and then I I'm pretty proud of like, okay, I'm proud of how I played this in the early game. I thought that was really good. Like mm -hmm. uh, switching in Cinderace, that was, I like that play because once I reverse trick room, I pressure your toad kiss and you respect that. You knew that I could just knock out your toad kiss and then just get up a uh, taunt on your slow bro, right? Yeah, the the taunt play definitely made sense. The only way that lost is if I literally called the hard trick room read and went for my reverse trick room again, and then you would have been in an awful spot. But I think you had to make that risk uh, because. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, but more so, I mean like the the turn after that. Whenever trick room was reversed, I got up Cinderace on the board and like my Mimikyu, um, against your Slowbro and, and the Tokyo. max knuckle play. That oh, was so man, solid. That that felt so good because like i knew you would not want to lose your toad kiss instead of that situation because that's your best answer for shifu um and like if you went for follow me if i just steel spiked and taunted on your slow bro like on that turn you 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 couldn't come back in the game from that like from now it's just like you you would have been in such a bad position that you had no way of coming back uh and i i knew that you're too good of a player to not let that happen you know <laughs> like <laughs> Uh, so like I, I I just like uh, hard committed with the max knuckle onto the NC switch. And whenever I saw it switch, I like popped up. I felt <laughs> so good about that. I was like, yes, let's go. No, that was absolutely solid. Of oh, play. that felt so good. And then um, what uh, and, and like the I I I was in such like I was in such a like, driving position throughout the rest of the game. Um, but I remember it came down to what Urshifu and Cinderace against Gastrodon and Togekiss. Uh, I thought I was plus one. Honestly, I did. Like, I forgot oh, wait, the wait, next no, no. part. I, I think you mean, uh, Whimsicott plus, uh... Don't you mean Whimsicott plus, uh... No, 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 I mean... No, so the thing is, like, I had oh, no, no, Cinderace... No, you... Yeah, we were talking I... about this couple of turns. Okay. Yeah, so I had Cinderace and Urshifu on the board against your Togekiss, which is not protected yet, just got on the board, and your Gastron, which is just max guarded. I think my play was just to commit and just go for an HJK and a close combat into Gastron as you protect it because your your play was always to protect there um but I just I I thought I had 100% because I thought Iron Heaven or Shifu would do it would have done much more than it did and I I thought I I thought I had it in you the find, bag after yeah. that yeah um but the thing is I still choked like I still choked we talked a little bit about this I I'm so sorry I'm so sad about this I wish I could have like recognize this if i was at a tournament i probably would have but like i <laughs> i don't know i, I wouldn't take it as serious um it's all good so, it's a friendly yeah i, I guess i just, i wanted the game three and this would have gotten it this, this is the this, turn this that really messed me up i'm gonna explain this to everyone in the chat so whenever it was or shifu and my whimsicott against gastron with one more turn of max and togekiss my play was always always helping hand iron head the toad kiss that lost to nothing absolutely nothing dynamax would have worn away i would have had a full hp sash whimsicott and my mimikyu in the back with pixie plate against just a normal gastron at about 70 percent and i could just dazzle shadow claw and dazzle again it's over nothing but i did helping hand i went for dazzling gleam and iron head because i thought rashifu was a good pokemon i thought it would have knocked out the toga kids oh that was so sad. You really overestimated a base 130 uh, attack stat. I know. Fun. Although my Togus is super bulky, to be fair. It is scope lens, but like yeah. uh, me and Eddie actually like made the spread. It was very specific for like Life of Dragon Ball Calcs with Dynamax. That makes a lot of sense. Like the thing is, um, I'm also kind of used to Life Orb or Shifu uh, Calcs because like that's what I I've been practicing. Yeah, with I thought you were banded. I did yeah. actually think Wicked Blow actually knocked out the slow bro. Dude, <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> it does so much damage. 
Oh man. Because Wicked Bill is like... what, 80? Like, yes! 80, right? <laughs> but guaranteed to crit, which is the annoying yeah. one. It has like, yeah, 1.5 ignores Intimidate. It's not a bad move, it's really not. But I feel like the the water one is much better. Cause like, you can just snipe NC and Arcanine. Outspeed Arcanine, you just bop it. They can't do anything. They have no outplay if you just smack them. They can't even protect. They can't do anything. It's like, the it's just such a hard counter for Arcanine. I love it. So wait, what item were you? Were you Assault Vest? Assault Vest, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was playing it like you were banded after that. <laughs> no, I, sh I should be banded. Actually, wait. I think Bandit would have won that. I can't lie. Yeah, I think, think. Well, Bandit would have been weird because you still you would have been locked in the lash out against my kiss, and that could have gave me some like offensive momentum. So that's, yeah, that's what I was at, aiming for, basically. At the same time, then I, then I could have just doubled your um your Gastrodon on that turn with like HJK and like Wicked Blow. If I was Bandit, that would have done so much damage, and then like Gastrodon would have been Dazzling Gleam uh, range next turn. That just Dazzle switched to Mindy, and then it's, just, it's locked up. As long, oh. as long as, like, Kiss can get the Gleam off, I think. I think Gleam could have, like, put you in a weird spot against Kiss, because, like, your Mimikyu was super weakened at that point, and I think Kiss could have yeah, won yeah, the yeah, end that's game. Fair. Yeah, that's what um, I think I was aiming for. Okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, I'm just, I'm upset that I didn't listen to my gut on those reads. Like, whenever, like, you protected Kiss, I, I knew that was coming out, but I thought I had a completely safe play, because I thought Urshifu was a good Pokemon. Oh, all right. If, Sorry, no, super random. No problem. If you don't know who Brady is, he got day two at the World Championship in 2018. He used a very, very hyper offensive team at the World Championship that year. <laughs> Was one way, one win away from actually making cut. Uh, yeah. He's. I already introduced him in the intro, but like again, one of my favorite friends, favorite players in this game, and yeah, he definitely like can really go aggressive with some hard reads, especially in a tournament setting. Oh boy, does Brady go in? Does Brady go in with oh, those man. reads? But oh, did you wait really, really quick? I want I want to say this against Edu inside of top eight of OCIC game two. I remember like I maxed Darkness his Togekiss, just switched into Gastron. I started like nodding my head. I was like, <laughs> I was, I felt it. Like I don't know, it felt so good. I got smashed game three, but I got that off, so that's all that matters. Yeah, that was a great set. Absolutely a great set. I do remember that I was watching it like through a Twitch because I was in Australia, but I was in like I was like walking to the venue because like I was exploring yeah. Australia, but like I had that on my phone and I was like, oh my god, this game is super close. <laughs> but, oh, it was so good. But I think that's gonna be wrap it up for now. Brady, do you have anything to say? Any uh of course any other social medias you want to link, uh other than the Twitter and uh Twitch channel, which I'll link in the description down below. Like I said, be smithy underscore. Go ahead and drop that follow. I know you're going to link them down, but I just want to make sure because I only use Twitter primarily. However, uh, Twitch, I sometimes do use. Uh, go ahead and follow me there. At be smithy, no underscore, okay? Um, sometimes, sometimes I stream. I'm a little bit inconsistent right now because I'm not really that motivated to play Pokemon. Uh, mostly because I kind of got like messed out of the, the Players Cup. I got like mished out of it. Like they, they just they just told me, you know, I just can't play because I got my birthday wrong. <laughs> but, uh, you know, outside of that, yeah, I, I'll stream more consistently whenever whenever I feel like it. It's just, it'd it be like that, you know? All right, that's going to be it. Again, his descriptions, his stuff will be linked in the description down below. Go check him out. Show some love because he is a really entertaining, funny guy, especially when he plays Pokemon. It's very fun to watch. But otherwise, oh, have a great day, people. Until we bow again, I'll catch y'all later.